Hey, Husker fans, welcome to another episode of the Husker Big Red Podcast with Chris Peterson and Danny Gillette. As always, go Big Red. Good morning, Husker fans, and welcome back to the Husker Big Red YouTube channel. I'm Chris Peterson, and joining me as always is Danny Gillette, and we're back here for our Monday morning uh, podcast. And uh, Danny, how are you doing this morning, man? I'm a little tired, but out here in uh, Boston and in New England, it's uh, Marathon Monday, so we got the Red Sox playing at uh, 11 a.m. We got the Boston Marathon to watch, so it's a fun day in these parts, Patriots Day. So, I mean, it, 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 it adds a little bit of excitement to Monday, which I generally almost always hate. So there's that. How are you? Oh, not too bad. Uh, good old Patriots Day. Pretty tired, a little a little sleepy, but that happens when you have a baby, I suppose. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, I forgot about old Patriots Day, so that's kind of a fun day in Boston. So Yeah, it is, for sure. That'll be cool. But um, it was a big weekend for uh, Nebraska, the, the Cornhuskers, especially the football program, getting a couple of big commits. Some visitors had a, um, the first scrimmage of the spring. A uh, bunch of things happening in the transfer portal with some visitors. Um, tough weekend for the baseball team, losing two out of three mm. against Rutgers. But, you know, it is what it is. But uh, let's get to it, man. As far as, uh, first topic, I guess, uh, you know, let's talk about some of these wide receiver commitments. Jackson Carpenter on Saturday, the in-state three-star receiver, you know, makes his commitment. Ends a little bit of a commitment drop for Nebraska that, you know, there just always, kind of always is one, you know, when you have that spring period. Um, right. but that ended that. And then uh, the – Commitment drought didn't last very long. One day, as on Sunday, three-star Bryson Hayes, who got a crystal ball um, or an expert projection from uh, Brian Munson from Husker Online on uh, Saturday, that turned out to be uh, correct on Sunday. So back-to-back -back days, it's really interesting that uh, Carpenter, I think, is ranked number 885 in the 24-7 composite yep. rankings. Hayes is number 886. So, you know, you can take that for what it's worth. But I like both of these guys a lot more than their ranking, I guess. So what are your thoughts, Danny? Talk about a couple of fun days. Nebraska certainly had some this weekend, and Carpenter, I think, is going to be an absolute steal. I mean, he's already ranked 88th numerically in the 24-7 <clears throat> sports rankings. Um, you know, the 72nd overall athlete in the composite and the 7th overall player in the state of Nebraska. So, you know, he's really fast. He can make things happen after the catch. Uh, he's he's very physical. He's athletic. Um you know, he kind of fits the mold that Nebraska is trying to uh, put together in their wide receiver room. And, um, you know, I think I think he could have a chance to really make an impact. I don't think this is just recruiting a guy for the sake of, you know, being a local Nebraska kid. I think this uh, Carpenter can have legitimate talent. And, you know, his offer sheet wasn't, you know, eye-popping by any means, Nebraska, Kansas, North Dakota State, Northern Iowa, and Dartmouth, but I suspect that his offer sheet will increase um, in the coming months, and it was good on Nebraska to get on this recruitment early and get a commitment. Yeah, it was, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, Carpenter especially, I mean, I thought that he, you know, he's the seventh-ranked player in the States, and the Huskers have three of the top seven now, but you know, he runs, you know, the 100 meter dash in like 10.65 and uh, or 10.67, I think. I know Bryson Hayes runs it in 10.65. So, you know, very similar type players. And I think that there's a lot of upside with both guys. I mean, Jackson Carpenter could technically be a, a defensive back, too. But, you know, it seems like they're definitely recruiting him as a receiver. And I think what I like about it is now it gives you two. Um, you know, two guys that you can develop, you know, that they've got size, they've got speed, they've got ability. So now you have two, you know, I've always felt like this was going to be, you know, a three man wide receiver class, you know, just with, with, with the group they have. So now you've got two. Um, I'm trying to th I can't remember what the phrase is, but you've got two really good, good players, you know, right now um, in the fold. So now you can, you know, shoot your shot with uh um, you know, Cortez Mills and some of those big targets. And then maybe, you know, maybe you land one of those guys. You can still come back and get another receiver, but you've got two really good guys that can develop and can play and make an impact here. And I think, you know, you look at Jalen Lloyd, a guy that, you know, mm -hmm. had pretty solid production, but was a super, you know, dynamic athlete. And I think that's what you're getting here in Jackson Carpenter and uh, Bryson Hayes. And they, you know, guys in the Midwest, they just tend to be, you know, a little bit underrated, um, especially in Nebraska, it seems like, but Kansas too. And I think overall it's a great sign to see Nebraska, you know, kind of locking down the Nebraska, Kansas, Iowa, Missouri 
you know, that kind of area. Cause that's Nebraska should dominate in that in, the, in those parts of the country. And, you know, you saw that with, uh, you know, Grant Bricks getting the best player out of Iowa. Um, you know, you're seeing him getting players out of Kansas. They're in it with Andrew Babalola, uh, Andrew Babalola, sorry, excuse me, in Kansas, you know, they're right with it, right in there with all the Nebraska guys. And I know that, you know, uh, Christian Jones and Chase Lofton obviously are, you know, out there and teams are, are battling for them. But Christian Jones was just on campus this weekend. So I definitely would that was not. was a surprise to me. Yeah, I mean, it's a surprise. You know, it was a surprise, but I guess, you know, I mean, I figured at some point it would happen. I think it's, you know, that relationship with Nebraska, it's always there. It's kind of the same with Carter Nelson. I mean, he was like he was taking all these visits last year, but, you know, he when it was time, he came for the spring game, and that is what mattered. And so I feel like, you know, I'm not sure if Christian Jones is coming back for the spring game, but if they get him for an official visit, which I believe they will. I don't think that he would not visit Nebraska. I still, I still, you know, at the end of the day, I'd probably still bet on Nebraska and Matt Rule because he just hasn't missed in a national recruitment yet. So until he does, you know, Matt Rule I'm talking about, I just don't believe that he will. So, you know, it's definitely possible, but I'm still at the end of the day going to bet on Matt Rule when it comes to Nebraska kids. And like we were talking about the other day, like them visiting Nebraska just from a school standpoint is like me visiting Boston College. I can go down there anytime and see the campus and I've already been there a couple of times and I know what the campus looks like. So visits to some of these in-state kids, especially when it comes to Nebraska, probably isn't too, too high on their priority list in terms of finding out what the campus looks like because they've already been there. And, um, you know, I think that's important to remember too, but it was good to see Jones on the, you know, on the campus and just looking at this 2025 class, just looking at the numerical rankings, you have Tyson Terry, 88, Jackson Carpenter, 88, Caden Vermas, 86, Bryson Hayes, 86, Connor Booth, 86. So these are guys that can develop into possibly four stars and are very high three stars. So although to some, you know, oh, three star you and blah, 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 the, these, you know, commitments have a lot of room to grow. And in the case of, you know, Terry, for example, and even Carpenter, I would say, um, you know, they could possibly be bumped to four stars by the time all is said and done. Like a lot of these prospects, I mean, people don't, people either don't think or don't realize that there's still a lot of development to be had. And, and I think, you know, Matt rules on a good job, even with, you know, five commitments in this class of getting on these recruitments early. I mean, Caden Vermas committed, you know, at this time last year, April 20th. So he's done a good job of, you know, identifying who he wants early, identifying, you know, key players early, and, you know, also recognizing that there's room for development and having a plan. So I think this class is shaping up pretty well, and all things considered, I'm happy with where it sits. Yeah, and people will talk about three stars, but, you yeah. know, there's a lot of three stars that end up playing in the NFL. That's not a, you know, the three stars, you know, the – I would say it's there's a bigger difference between, you know, like a mid to low level three star and a low level, you know, four star. Well, I kind of messed up my point, but at any rate, there's not that big of a difference. Between, I know what you're saying. Yeah. You know, the, the, the lower range and it's like the fourth round of the NFL draft in the seventh. Round. You know, I don't think that those, uh, you know, players are that different. It's kind of just more about finding the right fit and finding the right, you know, coach, the right system, because, you know, you can look at I mean, I remember, you know, there's a lot of. You know, you hear that on the Michigan side, too. Oh, three-star you. And I remember people saying that about Kenneth Grant and Mason Graham. Well, those two guys are going to be first-round picks in next year's draft. And this is only their third year in college football. So if you know what you're doing, you know, and uh, if you can evaluate talent and develop it, then, you know, you don't have to worry about the recruiting rankings so much. So I'm not worried about these rankings. And look at Jalen Lloyd. He's a great example of, you know, a guy that was barely – I don't think he even got ranked until, you know, Nebraska got his commitment. And he – he and Marvin Harrison were the only players in the Big Ten that had three touchdown catches of over 50 yards last year. So, and that that just goes to show you that just because these guys are lower ranked doesn't mean they can't produce. I always go back to my friend uh, Chris Lindstrom. Uh, grew up, you know, about an hour and a half away from me. Drafted 14th overall by the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, two-time second team All-Pro, two-time Pro Bowler. Drafted in um, 2019. So, I mean. I mean, you know, especially as a lineman, a former lineman, you know, three-star linemen aren't something to necessarily be overlooked. And I'm happy for, you know, Chris and his development. And it just shows that, you know, sometimes you can outplay your ranking. I mean, and for Chris, you know, he played high school football in Massachusetts. And I think, you know, it's kind of a case where he might have gotten, you know, overlooked um, 
nationally because he played in Massachusetts, kind of like we see with some Nebraska kids not being ranked properly. But 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 anyway, my point is, you know, the three stars like that you can make something out of a three star player, and you know, you see, like you said just a little bit ago, three star players go to the league all the time. So, I mean, I'm happy, you know, with three star players. We don't need, you know, five, all five star recruits. And quite frankly, and I know you mentioned this with the basketball portion of it, I'd rather have a three star player because he'll probably stay in school a little bit longer and continue to develop. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think, especially with basketball, that's part of the, you know, conversation, trying to find the right guys that are going to fit and be multi-year players. And, you know, Nebraska is probably not going to have that issue as much as, you know, a team like, you know, a Duke or Kentucky or something. But right. we saw that with Calipari. I mean, if you if you just recruit, you know, a bunch of five-star kids, they're not ready. They're not old enough to play in this transfer portal era. And I, I think that's why, you know, part of the reason why he's at Arkansas now. And it, that's going to be interesting to see how that whole thing shapes up. But yeah. at any rate, um, let's switch to uh, some spring ball talk now that we switched in some basketball. They're really fast yeah. on a random note. But, We're all over the um, place. <laughs> but, but at any rate, I do really like where this 2025 class is building. Yes. The Huskers, they're yep. in a great spot. You know, TJ Latif, they got a lot of guys coming for spring spring practices and, and the spring game. So, you know, and this is a, this is a competitive team. And I, I honestly think that, you know, the spring league that they have, I think that's going to be something that's attractive to players. And just, that was a great idea. Was that their first yeah. year? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the first year they've done that. I love the guy. I think it's Bobby Hessling. I'm not even sure if that's yeah. his real name. You know, I don't know if they, if that's his actual name, but he is, he's pretty hilarious. Um, I don't know who he is, but want to give him a shout out. And yeah. I love those highlights and it gives us, a, it gives us a look into spring ball. You know, they do the player interviews, um, which are fun gives them more of an opportunity to, you know, work on their media relations skills and stuff. But but mostly, I just love the competitive spirit of it. And, man, you know, even though we didn't get a lot of highlights yesterday, it was it's interesting, though, that there was more uh, Danny Kalen highlights in the spring, you know, minute or the spring scrimmage highlight they released yesterday than Dylan Rayola. I don't know. It just seems like maybe that's, that's slightly intentional. But Danny Kalen's definitely playing his butt off right now, though. It is. I mean, they don't want to show Dylan Real. I mean, one post and we immediately <laughs> write about it. And next thing you know, he's the best thing and fans are going nuts. So it is intentional. They know what they're doing. Um, I mean, Dylan did have one throw in there. They, they showed him kind of stepping up and dropping a uh, throw. So I think it's they... also kind of smart because it just lowers <laughs> expectations because, you know, us, every single Dylan Real highlight where we're, you know, thinking he's the next best thing and we're offseason champions and we're going to win it all. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see Danny get his due. I think, I think with all the Dylan Raiola talk, I'm not going to say he's underrated, but he's definitely taken a little bit of a backseat just in terms of, you know, fan excitement and things like that. So, you know, he's no slouch either. And um, I think that, you know, as long as he continues to develop and keeps developing, he's going to be equally as good a quarterback. Um, maybe not equally as good a quarterback, but he's going to be, you know, not a huge drop off from from Raiola. So, I mean, we'll see what happens, but I'm just happy that the quarterback room seems to be developing at a high level. Yeah, they, they uh, definitely are. And I mean, Matt talked about, you know, he's, he's talked about the unique um, arm strength of uh Dylan Raiola, but I see something that, you know, stood out with me and probably a bunch of other people was, you know, he talked about their, uh, that he's never had like a college quarterback in 11 years been able to do, you know, what these guys can do in terms of like identifying protections and all that type of stuff. So there's a lot too that, you know, with quarterback, there's a lot that goes beyond just the physical aspect of it. And both of these guys seem to be well ahead of the curve in terms of, you know, handling all that stuff. So I think that's a pretty good sign. And, you know, in far, as far as them, playing right away i think i saw emmett johnson you know making some highlights there he's looking really good dante uh, dowdell had a 30 yard run on saturday yeah and he so. um i've been i've heard uh you know more of his name um you know dante dowdell you know popping up there which i think is good um i heard some good things about stefan thompson which um, is good because i think he had a little i don't want to say rough start and criticize him but he had a slow start to begin things I think it is, you know, it does seem to be that, you know, Matt Rule runs a tough, he runs a tough program that some guys aren't always quite ready for. So, um, you know, but it seems like those guys have kind of, you know, found their way. I mean, the, it happened last year and, and and those guys all, you know, were able to make it work. So, um, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, things are going pretty well with the spring. Have you, you know, heard some other stuff, Danny, about the scrimmage or spring ball of this past week? Yeah, I, I had heard that um... – 
the starting offensive line on Saturday was uh, Prohoshka, Henry Latovsky, Ben Scott, Justin Evans Jenkins, and Bryce Benhart. And I am completely okay with that. I don't know about you. I'll I'll uh, I'll I'll let you have your opinion before I delve into some more of what I heard from Saturday. I like that uh, uh, lineup. Y- yeah, no, I like that group. Um, Henry Rotovsky is a very is a he's played well when he's had opportunities, and um, I've been talking him up since the twenty twenty two season. So, yep. and I'm not shocked that he is in the mix there. And Evan Jenkins played well last year. Um, you know, he's we talked about him on Saturday as a guy that probably will be their starting center next year. He's been taking number two reps there, but yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all. I will be interested to see what happens. She's having microphone issues today. <laughs> Keep knocking my mind. I'll be interested to see what happens when um you know Turner Corcoran comes back and if they're gonna have him be a guard or a tackle, you know, and that I think that'll be kind of interesting. But um, but yeah, still a lot of football to go, but I like the depth that they've got up front to actually have you know tangible O line depth, it feels like for the first time in a long time. Absolutely. And you know, you don't have to worry about if somebody gets injured, what are you gonna do? Like now we have now we're starting to be able to cycle in players and things like that, which is important. Uh Harburg, I had heard, started on Saturday, and he is looking really good in these scrimmages. I've heard the past couple of weeks he's looked really good. So although, you know, the odds may be against him, let's be honest here, he's not, you know, just throwing the towel. He's still producing at a high level. Um, on Saturday, a wide receiver lineup of of uh, Bonner, Jalen Lloyd, and Alex Bullock uh, was present. So, I think that's interesting. I know Bonner um, plays fullback sometimes as well. Um, uh, Dante Dowdell uh, had a 30-yard run on Saturday. And, you know, I think that's uh, that's a good sign because I hadn't heard too much about him in terms of, you know, uh, practice reports and things like that. And um, Ashton Murphy, the recruit from last year, the commit from last year, played really well um and i think he just needs to get a little bit bigger obviously and a little bit stronger you know i would expect that coming from a from um you know a younger player once they hit that uh strength and conditioning program which is i think already you know we're already seeing the returns for nebraska you know i think that will help him even more uh turner corcoran has done a really good job of you know, helping Grant Bricks and coaching him up on the line, which makes sense because we've heard a lot of positive feedback on Grant Bricks over the last week or so. And Matt Rule's been impressed. I know you wrote an article about it on HuskerBigRed.com on Thursday, I think it was, how, you know, Matt Rule was impressed by Bricks. So that's encouraging as well because Bricks is going to be a key piece of the future. And, you know, by all accounts, he's a good kid too. So he has a lot of things going for him and I'm happy he's, adjusting well because it's not always easy for freshmen and um you know Bly Hill is going to you know get into the corner mix very quickly uh he's long he's fast uh he's not afraid to hit is what I'm hearing so I mean this was something that you talked about last week as well uh you know we we've mentioned Bly Hill's name on the show a couple times and um you know I think out of all of the commitments and the transfers that we got in the, you know, 2024 class, I, I, I feel like he flew under the radar a bit, but it's good to hear that he is making an impact on the field. And um, that was about all I had heard from Saturday, but there was a lot of good notes in there. Um, I'm happy that Turner is coaching up Grant because, you know, I think peer coaching can be useful too. And I'm excited about, um, I'm excited about the combination of Bonner Lloyd and Bullock because although Alex Bullock maybe not be the most explosive and fast like some of the other wide receivers in the room he does have good hands and he knows you know the system from last year already so I I'm I'm not going to say he's going to be an all-american but I can see him playing a big role due to the fact that he has familiarity and you know he is a you know a consistent player when given the opportunity um, and plus, you know, you need to block. You need to have receivers that are willing to block too. Yeah, um, is another yep. thing that sticks out in my mind. Um, especially if you want to run the ball as as much as I think Nebraska wants to. I think they're gonna. It's gonna be hard not to throw the ball, especially you know when Dylan and everybody gets rolling. But um, I think the running backs have me, you know, feeling good. The offensive line, um, the defense. So we'll get we'll get our our glimpse here in less than two weeks. Now we got the spring game, the twenty seventh. Uh-huh. So 
Um, that's going to be very exciting to see how all these quarterbacks, you know, go up. I'm assuming, you know, it's going to be interesting because I'm assuming that that Raiola and Kalen are going to be on different teams, how they did it, you know, last year, yeah. but I'm not sure. Obviously one of them is going to be on the same team as Heinrich. So it's going to be interesting to see how they divide up the quarterback snaps, you know, for the spring game. So um, at any rate, last thing I wanted to get to today, um, you know, transfer portal talk, I guess for a couple of reasons, because um, one, I believe the football transfer portal is opening today or tomorrow. I'm not a hundred percent sure if it's, I believe it's uh, today. The, the 15th yeah but at any rate for the next two weeks essentially it's going to be open season for you know players entering the transfer portal the spring portal hopefully we don't have anybody leave from nebraska i know some people have talked about adding a fourth quarterback i don't personally no. see that happening or think that that's necessary because i just we've talked I'll about see a guy wanting to come here to know that he's probably not even going to get a chance to play i mean exactly that's exactly right danny i don't see that you know unless you get a guy that comes and plus they don't have scholarships i mean they don't really have scholarship rooms so are you going to try to it's going to have to be somebody like a walk-on that's going to take an nil deal that you know basically knows they're not going to play very much and you already kind of have the veteran and heinrich harburg who you know like danny said it's been playing by all accounts he's really stepped up his game so to me they just needed a veteran quarterback and they already have a guy who won five games as a starter for him last year so if they need if they're in a, a tough situation that's a pretty good guy to turn to um, yeah, if there was a veteran that wanted to come and be a clipboard holder for an NIL deal, sure, you know, but I don't see that happening. So, no, I don't either. And, you know, the fact, honestly, in my opinion, the fact that Harburg stayed committed to this program is, is, was enough, you know, of a surprise in of itself. Um, but I don't see, I don't see anybody really, you know, any big name moving or leaving or any big additions. Are we over the, are, are we going to have to cut at some point? Um, that I mean, because I don't think it really matters till August, and then, you know, they can do things with some nil stuff and and whatever. So I mean, they are over, but you know, Matt Rule never seems to be worried about it. So I'm not too worried, but I don't see them adding like you know maybe if the right you know if there's a multi year transfer that they really think can be you know a true impact player or starter. You know, you can't you can't say no to anytime you get a big time talent, but I really don't see them. I'd be surprised if they added anybody in the transfer portal unless it's you know like a long snapper type just just throwing out some like some some type some position like that maybe but um on the basketball side of things a lot of you know a lot of visits a lot of things happening um you know still still no word on rink mass actually you know i'm wondering when that might happen at further might be some injury concerns there too because i know he missed some time at the end of last season so um not exactly sure what his status is going to be for next season which i think is going to be important but um i did they did host, uh, you know, a point guard this weekend that I actually know quite a bit about. Raleigh Wooster is his name, and he played at Utah last year, Utah State. Um, before that, he's actually from Missoula, Montana. So I've covered, I've covered him in person. I've interviewed him, him before. I um, watched him play quite a bit. Um, followed his college career because there's not that many kids from Montana that play D1 basketball. And uh, he, I think it would be a perfect point guard for Nebraska. He's a he's a pass first point guard. He's a defensive point guard. He's six four. And if you look at his numbers, um, his defensive win shares are kind of like off the charts, you know, for um, in terms of like looking at Nebraska's, you know, roster last year, they could not really like the Wade Taylor. They had nobody who could check Wade Taylor. And you could that was so glaring to me before that also under the transfer portal. I know. I don't know why I would call him right immediately. I mean, holy <laughs> yeah. cow. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know why he would enter the trend. Like it seemed like he had a big role for the Aggies last season. I don't I mean, maybe just wants to go see, uh, you know, what the payday is like. I don't know. I mean, there's got to be somebody that's like, hey, we'll pay you a crap ton of money. but Or he just assumes that that'll happen. Um, you notice the coaches are starting to wear 1890 stuff a lot more now. I did see that. John Cook was yeah. – I think he's the first coach that's been pictured in one in a long time anyways. I think Sean Callahan wrote since like 2022. Um, it was good to, to see him at the Runza. You know, made me a little jealous. I wish I was at Runza, but I wish my wear all the gear, wear all the gear, wear all the hats, <laughs> make all the sales pitches. Now that Trev is gone and and NIL is going to become more of a thing, do whatever you can to keep promoting the the uh, collectives and the brands. And it's good to see. It, but anyway, I totally I totally <laughs> derailed you from your transfer portal talk. But oh no, you're good. But no, that that does make sense, and it's. Um, especially in the basketball transfer portal, you've got to have, if you don't have NIL, you really don't mm. have a chance because that's just kind of how it works. But um, the, another name I wanted to mention, um, but yeah, Wooster, I think would be, 
He averaged like 10 points a game. He shoots like 28% from three, um, which is kind of strange to me because he shoots pretty good at free, a pretty high free throw percentage. So I feel like he could shoot a little bit better there. And, and frankly, I think that that's why this would be a perfect fit because if you want to, if you want to shoot better as a basketball player, as a guard, I don't know that there's a, a team better to play for than Fred Hoiberg. Like I guarantee you, Fred will make him a better shooter. And the rest of his game, he averages over four assists per game. Um, strong defender, 6'4", like I said, a true actual point guard. And this team hasn't had one of those, you know, I guess since Sam Griesel left. So that would be, I think, a nice move. They also um, are going to be hosting Igor Milicic, I hope is his name. I hope I pronounced that right. But um, a six foot ten, he's listed as a forward. He's more of a wing He's not like a post-up type guy. He's more of a three-point shooting type, but averaged 12 uh, points, eight, eight and a half rebounds, one block, one assist, shot 37% from three, 81% at the free throw line. Um, so, yeah, that would be, yeah. you know, an exciting piece um, and kind of interesting sort of like Bryce Williams, a guy that could probably play, you know, multiple positions. I mean, some some in the portal, you know, some of the uh, – Trying to think some of the accounts are, you know, have, have listed him, um, you know, scouting him as a guard almost too. So he would be another interesting pro, pro, uh, prospect. Excuse me. I'm having a tough time talking today. <laughs> Especially at the guard position. I mean, 6'10", shoots fairly well. I mean, that would just be another, you know, type of, you know, athleticism and dynamic play. Um, Milicic was an interesting name that you brought up. And um, it's going to be interesting to see. You know, Gavin Griffiths visited on Friday, so I'm, I'm wondering, you know, how that went. And they, they are actively looking for players in the portal, and it's just going to be, like I said last week, a matter of putting the pieces together. But it's not for their lack of trying. Yeah, if you got if you got Booster and Gavin Griffiths, I feel like those guys could come in and start, you know, right away, basically. So then you could have – that could be your – that could be your backcourt, and then you could have Bryce Williams and Jawan Gary as your front court, you know, and then Rink Mass if he's there, Andrew Morgan if he's not. Um, I know Frankie Fiddler's going to decide here shortly, um, so probably that decision will probably be out before we even post this podcast. So we'll see how That's that goes. I don't, I guess, because he can play right yeah. away, like, and who or Michigan know? State. It seems like I don't think I've heard some buzz about Nebraska late, so I mean, right. don't be shocked, I guess. But I don't, I don't buy it. I heard I Creighton was offering him more of a bench role, so he wouldn't go there. But I mean, honestly, if I want to play in March, I'm going to go go play under Tom and, Izzo. I mean, that dude is a March wizard. And I get well. I think just too, it's I, I said this from the beginning. You know, I just I have a hard time seeing. But you know, if he comes in and plays, then either Bryce or Juwan Gary's going to have to go to the bench. So. I mean, if one of those guys hadn't come back, I think it would have been a lot easier yeah. to, to sell the role. But I just think yeah. there's going to be a log jam there, which kind of, you know, hurts Nebraska too. But, and I, I, you know, I would like to see him maybe contact Wade Taylor because, man, if you put him in Fred Hoiberg's offense, like, holy cow, that guy would be yeah. dynamic. But at the same time, though, he's not a great defensive player. So, you know, I, it would be nice if they could get Wooster. Like, it would be nice to actually have a point guard that you could feel good about, you know, guarding. Not just point guards, but, you know, that that 6-3, 6-4 combo guard in the Big Ten that Nebraska just has had so much trouble with the last few, you know. Maybe they could have put yeah. him on Terrence Shannon, and he would have done a decent. Because having Casey say Tomanaga on Terrence Shannon is not the right thing. To do. At this <laughs> point, just give me an athletic guard who can score points because, yeah. because we needed that desperately against Illinois, against, you know, uh, Texas A&M because Wade Taylor lit us up. I get the defensive. I, I mean, I get the defensive component for sure. But if you're gonna outweigh your defensive flaws with offense, and you're an athletic, you know, really good shooter like Taylor is, I would take that all day. Oh, I would take him 100 percent just because. Uh, I mean, you can just put him in a ball screen and he can just dominate yep. the game. So it'll be, inter I'm interested to see where he goes and maybe if Nebraska does contact him, but um, with, I just think with Griffiths and his shooting ability and, 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 and you take Raleigh Wooster and all the stuff that he does, if he could become a slightly better shooter, which I think is very possible under Fred Hoiberg and, and Griffiths too, I think would be a great player under Hoiberg. Uh, I think that would be a really, a really, um, you know, high level backcourt for Nebraska it has a yep. lot of potential. And uh, so we'll see. I feel like, you know, there's going to be some news hopefully coming soon with rink mast, um, you know, whether he's going to declare for the draft or, you know, come back to Nebraska. I don't know if that injury has any, you know, lingering impacts. Um, I've seen some message board talk about that. So don't really want to get too much into it, you know, before there's some actual reporting on it, but 
definitely seems like that decision is taking longer than one would expect it to. And at least if he doesn't decide to come back, they do have a player like Morgan who they can slide into that spot. So um, it's not really a must get situation. It's more about we would love to have you back. And, you know, that's what you want when you're recruiting and you want to be prepared for, you know, whatever happens. And so Nebraska is sitting decently either way with the situation, however it plays out. Yeah. And William Kyle still out there, the yep. South Dakota state forward from Nebraska. Um, Farrell Payne from Minnesota is another guy that they've been in the mix with. So I want him. Um, yeah. I'd like him to, uh, I think he would be a, either one of those guys I would be happy with. Multiple and, years um, of development and, you know, decent size for the position. Uh, and is familiar with Big Ten play, as you kind of talked about last week. So, yeah, an average ten points a game. You know, you just you need the Big Ten's a tough conference. I mean, it is. And and Fred, to his credit, it took him a year or two, but he's adjusted to that. And he's I don't very think, well. Yeah, I, I really th I would say you know they need to add two more bigs if they you know so either you know they need to add Mass back and somebody else. So I still think they're going to have some work there because you need you need three guys that are like 6'10 to play in the Big Ten or you're going to have mm -hmm. a tough time. <laughs> so um, at any rate, I think that's what we got here for today. I better get rolling, you guys. But uh, thanks so much for joining us on this Monday episode. We'll come back on Wednesday. I'm sure there'll be a lot of talk about, you know, basketball transfer portal, probably some surprising football transfers, not hopefully at Nebraska, but just on the larger scale. Fingers crossed, address. nothing happens. Yeah, fingers crossed for Nebraska, but I think we're pretty I think we're pretty set. So um, at any rate, thanks for checking us out. If you don't already uh, subscribe to the channel, please do that. Hit the like button, get to the comment section, and uh, everybody have a great week, and go Big Red. Go Big Red.